Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tacoma Cyclist. This video has been three years in the making, so you're going to see uh, an, a much younger boogeyman and a much younger me. Uh, and the reason this has been three years in the making is because about three years ago, I was involved in a nasty car accident, and uh, frankly, some of this stuff had to be preserved until after all of the legal battles are done. So, sit back and enjoy a very old video that I made a long time ago that I'm just now cutting together, where I destroy a $10,000 S-Works tarmac. All in the name of science, of course. Uh, but sit back and enjoy it nonetheless. And of course, if you have any questions, comments, or want to see even more destruction on this frame, let me know. Put it in the comments below and give us a like or a thumbs up. Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Tacoma Cyclist. I am the Tacoma Cyclist, and with me as always is my sidekick, the Boogeyman. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to destroy this bike. Well, sort of. It's kind of already been destroyed. Uh, but what we're going to do today is we're going to cut into this, we're going to smash it with a hammer, we're going to do everything we can to show just how strong or weak a top-level carbon frame is. Yes, we're going to destroy a $10,000 bike. What we're going to do is we're going to take a hammer to it, we're going to take a saw to it, and we're going to tighten this thing on the top tube so much uh, that we hopefully get it to crack. And the idea is we want to be able to see just how sturdy these things are. This is a top level $10,000 road bike. Uh, it's already been kind of smashed. Uh, the rest of the bike's worse. No bueno. Um, but we're going to take a look at what it takes to break into this bike and, and really do some damage to it. Uh, the purpose of this is not just to uh, break the bike, in fact it kind of breaks my heart to break this bike, but it's really already smashed as it is and there's nothing much we can do with it other than turn it into a lamp, which we're probably going to wind up doing. But what we're going to do is we're going to tighten this guy down as tight as we can so that way you can put to rest the rumor of how much, you know, whether you should put this in a, in a vice stand or not, how much you can tighten it if you need to be afraid of doing that. Uh, one big caveat, if you're going to do that, uh, don't, don't say I told you to, or don't say I told you not to. Fact is, is we're gonna test it on this bike. How it works with other bikes may be totally different. Uh, and then we're gonna cut into this, we're gonna take a look at what's on the inside so you can see uh, how good the manufacturing process is or how bad it is, depending upon uh, what we see. And uh, then we're gonna see what it takes to actually uh, break this thing with a hammer. Okay, the first test we're gonna do with this is we are gonna take a regular work stand, a clamping work stand, uh, they sell these all over the place. This is from Performance Bike, and this is the kind that a lot of people are going to have because they're cheap. They have these clamps on them, and they can be oriented to uh, clamp on your top tube or on, or on your seat tube. And there are reports all the time of people uh, cracking their bikes using these. So I've got this affixed on there. The Boogeyman's capturing this from above, and I'm just going to keep tightening this until I hear cracking. I'm not going to smash it all the way through, but I'm tightening. I also don't want to get shards of carbon in my eye. I'm still not hearing any cracking. Boogeyman, you getting that pretty well? Yep. All right, I've officially tightened that as much as my puny cyclist arms can tighten it. And there's no cracking. Not even so much as a hint of cracking. And that's in there pretty damn good. The only sounds I'm hearing are coming from this spot right here. Boogeyman, can you zoom in on this spot? Don't use the zoom, just get the camera in there close. Right here, I'm hearing some cracking coming from there, but that's because that's cracked, it's broken. Other than that, I am not getting anything out of this. Again, that's not to say that uh, it can't be done, that you can't crack a bike. This is a very high modulus carbon fiber, and these bikes are not meant for clamping force this direction, they're meant for uh, different directional forces than clamping. So I'm going to move this up just a touch, see if I can get it to crack. You know, there's probably a little extra carbon fiber in this area right here. I'm trying to turn this quietly. I'm ever so slightly hearing what could be crackling sounds, but I just don't think so. So, again, I'm not going to say that you should do this, but that was me doing that as much as I possibly could and not getting anything out of it. I'm gonna do it one more time here, and I'm gonna do it kind of right in the middle. And if you're inclined to uh, clamp your top tube, this might be where you do it, uh, right across the middle right here, especially if you've got wheels and you're trying to balance this. 
Uh, and also I should state that this has got some notches in here. I've got it lined up in those notches. Uh, I don't have it off, out of alignment. All right, I'll shut up now. Uh, again, it's about as tight as I can get it. Uh, and it's just not, it's just not doing anything. So I'm not gonna say again that that means that you can clamp on your top tube, but what I'm saying is that uh, yeah, maybe on this particular bike, you could probably clamp it on your top tube and probably be okay. The, the thing's moving more than, than I'm moving it. So, I mean, the, the, uh, the stand is moving more than the bike's moving. So, uh, pretty solid. Again, not a ringing endorsement, but something to think about. Okay, next test, hammer. Now, this is not a big hammer. Uh, I don't want to take a big hammer to it. Who's really going to take a hammer to their bike? The reality is though, what I want to test is what happens when I hit this bike with this hammer? How badly does it crack or does it crack at all? Does the hammer just bounce off of it? So Boogeyman's going to get some close-ups here in this particular area. I'm not going to give it the just absolute will yet. We'll start with some soft swings. That's a swing hard enough that if my hand were there, I'd probably be saying bad words right about now. Oh, <laughs> swing and a miss. Not too bad. Ah, I got a little dent there. Okay. Now I crack. It might just be paint. See if you can bring that around here, boogeyman. Looks like I might have cracked some paint here. We'll see. All right, back that up. This one's going to be a, a whack. Okay. Yeah, we got some breakage there. Ah, right in the finger. Um, that was a pretty hard hit. Now, I mean, again, it's a small hammer, but I would never hit a nail that hard. Um, and yeah, I finally got some cracking in the frame there. So, um, sure, I guess uh, a hard hit's gonna take this and, and crack it, but I know for a fact that from personal experience, that's the kind of crack that could be repaired, especially when you get your handlebars swing around and whack you in the top tube. So if you ever see this kind of crack right there on the top tube, probably got a nice little wreck and a crit or something. We can attest to that. Okay, next up, nice little uh, jeweler saw designed to make very fine cuts in metal. Uh, I'm gonna do this very cautiously because frankly I value my eyesight and I don't want to uh, go blind. It's actually cutting through there pretty easily. I'm gonna have a mess to clean up. I'm gonna get done with this. Well, I should say it cut through the top layer pretty easily. And then after that, it started to get uh, to be a bit more challenging. Okay. 
This is some strong stuff. Uh, I've cut through some serious metal with this blade before, and I struggled like crazy on this one, and barely made it through the top layer of carbon on that one, and the saw blade just simply snapped. So uh, I'll still make my lamp, but for right now, not with this saw. Okay, uh, so we couldn't really cut through this without breaking the saw, but what I can do is I can get here and I can show you just how thick that carbon fiber is. Uh, now, yeah, this is a, this Specialized doesn't make super lightweight bikes. Uh, the Tarmac is their lightest. Uh, of course, they came out with the Tarmac Extra Light this year, but this is still a lightweight bike. Um, fully built up, this bike was in the 14 pound range. And what's interesting about it, again, is if you look in there, you can see several thick layers of carbon fiber. So when you hear that, uh, that certain bikes have been lightened up quite a bit, this is where they do it. They break down some of that carbon fiber. They use a little bit less. And uh, that's where they make up their efficiencies in the, in the weight. This bike is fully carbon. Uh, headset, everything is completely carbon, so there's no... I mean, even the dropouts are fully carbon. Uh, so there's no extra weight there. And that's metal, this is all carbon, but it's uh, relatively thick. You can see that there. It's perhaps a little thicker than you might think. I'm gonna to try to turn some light on that. That's, that's a probably about an eighth of an inch thick of carbon fiber right there. So it's, it's definitely got some depth. I'm show you where the rear stays were cracked. Love that crunchy sound. Uh, this bike got some cracks all the way through it. Uh, that's what happens when a 14 pound bike meets a 4,000 pound car. Okay, well, thanks for joining us. Uh, that was an interesting experiment we just did there. Uh, it's not my favorite thing in the world to shatter, break, and cut a beautiful $10,000 bike, but it was kind of already done for me. Uh, what a shame, just what an absolute shame. But what I can say is, uh, you know, there's certainly a lot of myths about carbon fiber. There's certainly a lot of truths about carbon fiber that are floating out there. It is one heck of a robust material. Had I wailed on an aluminum bike uh, with a hammer like that, it would have been just as damaged, if not more. Uh, maybe the boogeyman will let me test this out on his CAD 12. No, I didn't think so. Uh, so we'll, we'll forgo the tests on a live sample of the aluminum bike that we have in the shop. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty damn sturdy material. Uh, heck, I broke a really nice saw with that one. So um, good stuff. Uh, I guess maybe check us out next time when I turn that into a lamp. Until then, thanks for stopping by. Uh, go ahead and click like, subscribe, and uh, share this with your friends below. Thanks. See you next time.